Now as I has it, do you know there is a complete language and vocabulary with photography, which if you do not understand, is always going to hold you back from creating amazing images. And today, I'm gonna to help you unlock the power of your photography through the magic of six simple words. My little boy is five and he is just beginning to learn how to, to read and to write. And like everybody as a child, he started with the A's, the B's, the C's. Those building blocks that by themselves don't really mean very much. Photography is much like this, that we need to learn a basic vocabulary before we can start to, to form sentences, to, to, to express ourselves outside of cat and dog. During the first week I was at photo school back in the 90s, wanting to become a, a famous <laughs> professional photographer, and that didn't happen, we were given some assignments. And one of them was to go out and get five friends and to line them up away from the camera at sort of two or three feet intervals, set the camera up on a tripod and take photographs at different apertures to see what happens in regards to depth of field when the aperture changes. What we were doing was we were being taught the basic language of photography. And those basics are aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. But of course, these basics are not the be all and end all of photography. There are some other words that we can introduce now that we have those ABCs down. In English, we have nouns, those naming words. They're, they're the words that really kind of start to flesh out the thing that we're talking about. And photography has a similar word, and that is called form. This is, this is the life giver. Form is what is bringing a photograph to life. It is adding, it's adding depth and dimension to your images. It makes them feel more real and, and, and tangible, like you can almost reach out and touch it. And that is so important if you're looking to make something resonate with the viewer. Think about on a very basic level, a, a picture of an orange. An orange with no shadow or shaping, you know, sh uh, shading on it feels like it's just a, an orange circle. It doesn't really mean all that much. But as soon as there's some shadow, a bit of texture coming through, we'll get on to texture in a minute, then it starts to feel like you can taste the citrus. And then once you taste the citrus, it takes you on a whole another place. I love and always have loved flat photographs, images that contain lots of angular shapes in them. And when I used to just photograph them as just shapes, it, they kind of lacked a bit of something. There was, there was something that was missing. It was only when I started going, oh, actually, do you know, if you photograph at the morning or the afternoon, when the sun's not quite so high straight up and down in the sky, and you, le you use those, those shadows, it brings a bit more life to those photographs. With everything that you photograph, I, 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 yeah, I can't stress enough the importance of shadow. It's such an overlooked tool in your arsenal. It's what's making form come alive. If something is lacking in your photographs, it's often shadows. Think about the shadows that are around you and how you can use them in practical ways to make your photographs have that little bit more something about them. Color, 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 color is so important in photography. And, but, it's, it, but it's not just about getting somebody's attention. It's not like you see on YouTube, you have all these thumbnails that you've been looking at just before you watch this video about you know, people using bright colors to, to grab your attention and things like that. Color is a, a base reaction inside all this. We all respond to color in a very similar sort of way. And that's what makes it so powerful, but also you need to be careful about how you use it because it's not just about being shouty. 
often colour can convey a, a mood. You know, we're familiar with the you know the bright reds and yellows and and the the, the, the sun you know the golden hours and all that yellow stuff. But what about the blues? What about those cooler, quieter colours? What sort of mood can they impart? That 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 quietness. Spending twenty five minutes or so just looking at you know colour theory will pay huge dividends in thinking about how you can use colour effectively in your photograph. Now we come to the granddaddy word out of all of this, the composition. Composition? Composition. Composition. They are, the composition is the story weaver. That is the idea of putting all of these elements and all the other ones that you can actually discover together to create a compelling photograph. You can't create an image that holds itself together and just feels right without understanding the basics of photography. Aperture, exposure, ISO, about how you want to use them, why do you want to use them in certain ways, about what is the effect going to be on the viewer, what do I want to convey and what can I use to create these things? Composition is such a complex topic, but once you start to break it down into single words of understanding that vocabulary, then you will get so much closer to finding your own style, your own voice, because you're not going through a template. You're not just carbon copying all the other people's work that's come before you you are developing that vocabulary, speaking the language of photography. And that is so wonderful. Once you start to be able to express yourself. Lines are the guiding forces in photography. They, I call them the guiding forces because they guide our eyes around the image. Think how strongly they do this. You can't look at a photograph that has you know, lines in it without being, being almost drawn just to, to see where they go. They can convey such a mood in the, and, and really alter radically the way that we interpret the photograph. Those different kind of lines that we have. And certainly I, I used to be drawn heavily to, to diagonal lines because I thought that, you know, they, they're quite shouty, aren't they? Diagonal lines always sort of seem to make themselves, you know, stand out. They're always like, you know, they're elbowing their way to the front, say, look at me, look at me, look at me. Whereas horizontal lines, vertical lines, they're more powerful, I feel, because they impart a stability, an orderliness to a photograph. And they don't seem to shout as much as their diagonal counterpart. So that's probably why, as, as, a, you know, as a young art student, I was more drawn towards the shouty, <laughs> shouty aspects because I wanted to be seen. Think about those two very basic approaches to lines, that if you want to use them in your, you know, in your, 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 your movies, we're not making movies, <laughs> we're making still images, paper movies, all right? Think about how you can employ those. A diagonal line with some motion blur, how's that gonna make that image feel? Whereas if you have a very straight up and down set of lines with everything is frozen, what does that feel to you when you're looking at that image? Shapes are the mood setters in photography. Again, when my little boy was, was quite young, he used to have building blocks and they were triangles and arches and squares and occasionally there was a, a, a circle in there. And all of those shapes convey a little bit of a different mood. Again, you know, the square shape is a bit more of a solid, dependable thing, whereas the, 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 the circle, just it's going to roll all over the place. It's got a softer, more organic kind of feel. And in photography, think about shapes like this. The most easy way to, to put this into your mind is to picture a silhouette 
of a person. Now, you don't need to see what's in you know, the, the eyes and all that kind of stuff to know that that's a person. You recognize the shape. The shame goes with, with a car. We are taught from a very early age to think of things as shapes. That a certain shape represents a thing. And that you can, you know, it, it, can, be, it can be really tricky because it, it entices you to photograph things in a way that you think is, is expected. But once you get over that hump and you think about the, the effect that certain styles of shapes have on the person themselves, then you can incorporate those into a photograph. All of these ideas are very subtle if you want them to be. They don't always have to be shouting, just there in a corner. Imagine a, an image full of, you know, lots of rectangles and squares. Again, you've got the ups and the downs of the vertical lines. You've got those square images. It creates a feeling of stability. Whereas something with lots of circles and rounds and squiggly shapes that convey a feeling like a, you know, like a snake or something, those have a little bit more of a, an abstract, free-flowing, organic feel about them. But a shape has a companion that goes hand in hand with it. Oh, now I mentioned texture earlier and how shape and form have come together to make a, a, the feeling of an orange, right? But texture, texture is a, a, an often overlooked element in your photographs. And the reason for this is that I think most people get hung up on the idea of, you know, shapes and, and, and shadows and lighting and, and your lines and, and they're all useful. But when you can add some texture, then it makes the photographer an expert in drawing the viewer into the image that they're looking at. They often don't see this in landscape photography because we, we're not used to holding a mountain. And this is a cunning little trick that our mind is playing on us. We don't feel the texture of a mountain because we can't hold a mountain. But I show you a picture of a golf ball. You know what a golf ball feels like. So you, your, your brain can make the connection. These are things, we can feel the leather of a steering wheel. We can feel the smoothness of, of metallic paint, the crumbling texture of brick, of wood. All of these things are conjuring up in you right now a feeling about how that thing would, would how, how, would, how it would feel on your fingertips. Those are the, that's the beauty of this. Look how, look how well it's working. If you want to highlight texture, bring it through. Think about combining it with you know, lots of angular light. Again, that shadow. So you've got some shape and some form going on. See, see how these, these, these words are all starting to work together to give you something, a set of instructions, set of tools, that you can combine and use in different ways to start to write your own story with these photos. For everything that photography school taught me, there was one thing that they omitted to tell us. To find out what that was, check out this video over here. Thank you ever so much for watching and I will see you again soon.